Welcome back to the lesson 7 of this After Effects series where we're going to learn everything about the speed graph editor in After Effects. So in the last lesson we have learned how to use the value graph editor to its full potential. But there are some limitations to the value graph editor due to which you need to have a proper understanding of the speed graph editor. But when you open up speed graph editor for the first time it may look a bit confusing. But don't worry after this video you will have a good understanding of the speed graph editor in After Effects. So first let's check out what exactly is the speed graph editor and how to use it. So here we have a basic animation with the linear keyframes in a curved motion path. Let's easy use the keyframe by pressing F9 and let's jump on to the motion graph editor. So for that we have to click over here. Now we are already in the speed graph editor. But in case the value graph is selected then click over here and from here you have to select edit speed graph. The speed graph represents speed over time and right now we are animating the position property and in After Effects distance is measured in pixels, pixels per second over time. And in the speed graph editor this black line you see here the speed is absolutely zero and the higher you travel from this line the faster the object is going to animate. So in simple terms in speed graph height equals speed. And as these keyframes are easy is keyframes, we already know how a shape animates with easy is keyframes. And if we observe this motion curve, then the shape is starting from zero and then accelerates. And here is the peak of this graph where the shape reaches the maximum speed and then again deaccelerates to stop the animation. And in the speed graph, we have these Bezier handles. If we pull the Bezier handle and extend the length of the Bezier handle, we change the influence of this keyframe on this side of the motion graph. And if I pull the Bezier handle of this side of the keyframe, then I am changing the influence of this keyframe on this side of the motion graph. And if we observe the onion skin of this shape, you can again notice the same. The more I pull the Bezier handle, the more I pull the Bezier handle and increase the influence of this keyframe, more the in-between frames are compressed towards that keyframe. That means it's adding more ease to that keyframe. And the same thing will happen for this Bezier handle as well. Oh, by the way, when you are trying to pull the Bezier handle in the speed graph editor, you may face this issue like it's moving in the Y axis. So for that, first of all, you have to turn on this snap and then you have to press and hold the shift key and it is going to be properly snapped on the line where we have the speed complete zero. Now if we check out the animation, you can notice that this area has more ease compared to these two keyframes. And now if we change the height of this keyframe like I mentioned earlier in speed graph, height represents speed. So here you can notice that how by changing the height, it is also changing the speed of this keyframe. Now if we double click on this keyframe from here, you can actually change the speed of the keyframe and also the incoming and the outgoing influence. Now here we don't have any Bezier handle this side, so the speed is zero. But here, so from this side the animation is starting, so here we have the speed. So if we give it around 1500, the speed will be 1500 and if we increase the influence, it is also going to increase the influence. Let's click on it. Now you can see the speed is 1500. And now if we preview the animation, you can see the animation is starting very fast. Then here it has an is and then again stopping slowly with the deacceleration. Again, if we change the influence of this keyframe and pull back the Bezier handle, you can notice that how the in-between frame of this keyframe is impacting. Okay, now again select all these keyframes and press F9 to convert it into basic is keyframe. And now we are going to select this keyframe and move it up. By the way, if the Bezier handles are detached, you can easily attach the Bezier handle of the keyframes by selecting both the side of the handles and then clicking on this icon says Auto Bezier. If you click on it, right now the Bezier handles are attached. Now let's double click on it and let's increase the speed to something like 1500 and let's decrease the influence to around 9. I'm also going to decrease the influence of this side as well. And also let's increase the influence of these two keyframes a little bit. And now if we preview the animation, you can notice that the shape is starting slow and here it has a continuous motion and then again deaccelerating to stop the animation. 
And if we pull it even further, let's select this keyframe and double click on it and let's increase the speed to around 2500 or let's give it 3000. We're going to go to extreme and press OK. And at the same time, we're going to ease out both the end of the keyframes. And now you can notice the animation is a little snappy this time. And now it's time for the final assignment of this lesson. So here we are going to animate this ball that is coming inside the screen and traveling this arced path and then going outside the screen. Okay, let's add a keyframe on the position property and let's place the ball over here. And let's jump on to next 8 frame and let's place the ball over here and now we are going to make the motion path curved. So for that, you have to press and hold the control key plus the alt key and it's going to activate the convert vertex tool, which looks like this. Now, if we click and drag from this corner, we can bring the Bezier handle. Same thing we can do from this keyframe as well. And now let's jump on to the next 12 frame and let's place it somewhere around here. And let's adjust the Bezier handles and also let's bring the Bezier handle from this keyframe. And I would like to break this Bezier handle. So for that again press and hold the control key plus the alt key and then if you click and drag a Bezier handle, it's right now breaked. So now I'm going to adjust the Bezier handle even further. Now we are going to jump on to next 12 frame again and let's place the ball over here. And for this keyframe, I would like to change the position and place it over here. And also adjust the motion path of this side of the curvature. Again, let's jump on to next 12 frame and let's move the ball and place it over here. And let's bring the Bezier handle. And let's jump on to next 12 frame again and place it over here. And also adjust the motion path of this side of the curvature. And let's jump on to next. 12 frame again and let's move the ball outside the screen and again adjust the Bezier handles to adjust the motion path curvature and let's preview the animation with the linear keyframes first. By the way, if you are wondering how can I properly adjust the timing in between the keyframes and how do I know it is actually going to look good? Well, the thing is that you have to practice a lot with the timing and spacing and do some experimentations with it to have a proper understanding of how much frames you need to put in in between the keyframes so that the overall animation looks good. The best way is first preview the animation with linear keyframes. If the overall timing looks good, then go with it. If it doesn't look good, then adjust the timing of the linear keyframes at this stage itself. And you can further adjust the timing a little even after the final animation. So right now I'm going to select the keyframes and easy is it by pressing F9. And let's jump on to the speed graph editor. In the speed graph editor, I'm going to select this keyframe and all the other keyframes that are there in this arc. So at this position of the motion path, the ball is going to move the fastest because it is moving under the force of gravity. When it is going up, it is going against the gravity. So at this positions, the ball should slow down and at this positions, the ball should speed up. So we're going to select this keyframe, this one and this one and we're going to convert it to auto bezier keyframes and then we're going to further move it up let's select this one and let's move it further up and then we are going to change the influence of these keyframes as well so let's adjust these keyframes a little bit and let's move this further up so in this curvature this keyframe should have the maximum height because over here the ball should move the fastest and in case you face issues like this so you can fix it by changing the influence of the other keyframes okay now let's ease out these keyframes a little bit as well and also increase the height of this keyframe okay now let's ease out these keyframes i would also like to select these two keyframe and convert it to auto bezier keyframe and let's place it over here and let's further increase the ease of this keyframe. Well, I think here we need to add few more frames. So select all these keyframes and let's move it this side and slightly adjust the height of this keyframe. And again, select all these keyframes and move it this side. 
and slightly adjust the easing of this keyframe as well. Now let's check out the animation. Well, the animation is already looking pretty good, but there is a little issue over here. When the ball is reaching the maximum height, here it feels like the ball is completely stopping. But we don't want the ball to completely stop. It should slow down, but it should have a very little movement there as well. So we can fix it very easily. Just move on to the motion craft editor. We are going to select these two keyframes. The keyframes where the ball is at the maximum height. All we are going to do is we are going to move it above the line of zero. So on this line, the speed is absolutely zero. If we move it above this line a little bit, it is going to move at a very little speed, but the speed is not going to be zero. So we are going to further ease out these keyframes a little bit. Let's move it even above and also make sure that this thing doesn't happen. This keyframe should have the maximum height of this whole motion curve. And let's check out the animation. And here the animation is looking even better. All right, so that is it for this video. In the next lesson, we're going to learn everything about the motion path in After Effects. So if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I would be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates. Until then, goodbye.